Hey, today we're going to continue our discussion of our unit on nomenclature and talk about compounds that contain polyatomic ions. So first let's talk about what a polyatomic ion is. It's uh, So the prefix poly means more than one. And so usually when we've been talking about ions, we've been talking about a charged atom. Well, a polyatomic ion is more than one atom, and overall the unit is charged. And so you want to think about it like one atom, even though it's a group of atoms. These are assigned special names, and you are going to get to use a polyatomic sheet, but we will go through and talk about where the names come from so you have an understanding of them. The main group of polyatomics that we're going to work with are called oxyanions. And so oxyanions contain an atom of a given element with a different number of oxygen atoms. So it could be like sulfur combined with oxygen or chlorine combined with oxygen. So it's, it's some other element and oxygen. And you can have different numbers of oxygen atoms in these polyatomics. So if you have a set of oxyanions that contain a certain element, and only two of them exist, then there are ways to name those. So the oxyanion with the smallest number of oxygen atoms gets an ITE ending, and then the other oxyanion, the one with the larger number of oxygen atoms, gets an ATE ending. So for example, we have two oxyanions that contain sulfur and oxygen. The first one has three oxygen atoms, and the second one contains four oxygen atoms. So SO3, 2 minus, has less oxygen, so it's sulfite. SO4, 2 minus, has more oxygen, so it gets the ATE ending, making it sulfate. The thing to keep in mind, though, is that this SO3, this entire thing, is a minus 2 charge. So you could think about it as being, you know, one element, X, or whatever symbol you want to use, and it has a 2 minus charge. So don't let this part mess you up. Okay, that 3 just goes with the oxygen. This whole thing is a minus 2 charge. And that's probably the hardest part with these. Okay, besides having two oxyanions for a particular element, you can also have a set of four oxyanions with a particular element. So the one with the smallest number of oxygens gets a hypo beginning and an ITE ending. So for ClO1 minus, it's hypochlorite because chlorine is our base. We've got the hypo prefix and the ITE suffix. Okay, we add another oxygen, we take off the prefix. So now we just have chlorite for ClO2 1 minus. Keep in mind, all of these oxyanions for chlorine are all a minus 1, even though we're changing the number of oxygens. That entire unit is a minus 1. Okay, if we add another oxygen, we're going to change the ending to an ATE ending, so chlorate. And if we add another oxygen, we get perchlorate. So we've added a different suffix, or different prefix, excuse me, and then the ATE suffix. Okay, let's look at some rules. You're going to name these just like you would name binary compounds, usually type 1 and type 2, since these are charged particles that you're usually going to have something like a metal, non-metal combination, so these are similar to type 1, type 2. Just like with type 2 before, if you have a transition metal, then you need to use Roman numerals to indicate the charge on that metal, just like we did with regular type 2s. Sometimes you're going to need more than one of those polyatomic ions, but you can't just do the subscripts, because for example, let's say we had SO3, 2 minus, and we had aluminum. Well, since the charges are different, we know we need a total of a plus 6 and a total of a minus 6 to get that to work out. So that means we need two aluminums. Remember, we said don't let this 3 confuse you. SO3, 2 minus is one unit. And so what that means is that we need three SO3s. Well, you can't just put a 3 down here because that looks like O33. And so we need parentheses around the original polyatomic because we need three of them, of that entire unit. Okay, so think about it as one unit. Don't let those subscripts confuse you. Okay, here's another example. We have iron 2 phosphate, so that tells me this is a plus 2. Phosphate from our chart we know is a minus 3. Same kind of idea. We need a plus 6, and here we need a minus 6. So we need parentheses around our phosphate, and we need two phosphates because each phosphate is a minus 3. So that will give us the minus 6 that we need. Let's look at some examples. Okay, so our first part is sodium. And it's a type 1 metal, so I know I don't need Roman numerals. CO3 is carbonate, and you can find this on your chart. 
And so that's just going to be the next part. So this would be very similar to naming a type 1. It's the first element name, and then the second one, it gets the IDE ending. In this case, because it's a polyatomic, we just put the polyatomic name. And you can look all these polyatomics up on a chart. Okay, let's look at this one. We've got CSClO4. Well, CS is cesium. Now let's figure out if it's a type 1 or a type 2. Well, since we know the charge on cesium, it's a type 1, so we don't need Roman numerals. We can go on to the anion. ClO4 is per chlorate. And that's it. Okay, let's look at a third one. Cu is copper. Now let's see if we have a type 1 or a type 2. Copper is... Where is copper? I don't see it. Well, copper is a transition metal. Okay, so that means we're going to need Roman numerals. So now we need to look at our anion. Well, SO4 is sulfate. And I know from my polyatomic chart that sulfate is a minus 2. And so since there's one sulfate and one copper, copper has to be a plus 2 to make it neutral. And so it's copper, Roman numeral 2, sulfate. Okay, now if we go the opposite direction, you need to check your charges. So let's try this one, barium sulfate. Well, barium is in group 2, so we know the charge. So this makes it a type 1 with a polyatomic. So plus 2, sulfate, we just talked about, is SO4, 2 minus. This whole thing is a minus 2. This whole thing is a plus 2. It's good the way it's written. Remember, we write it all as one word, so BASO4. Okay, let's look at potassium hypochlorite. Potassium is K, and it is a group 1, so it's a plus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. And hypochlorite is ClO1 minus. So we have ClO, that's a minus 1. K is a plus 1. So KClO is potassium hypochlorite, and we don't need any subscripts because it's plus 1 minus 1. Let's look at the last one, zinc 2 phosphate. Well, this Roman numeral tells me that zinc is a transition metal. And it also tells me that this is the charge on the zinc. So Zn plus 2 phosphate is PO4 minus 3. So I need a way to make this neutral. Well, 2 and 3 have 6 in common. So we need 3 zincs, and we need 2 phosphates. But because this is a polyatomic, I need parentheses and a subscript 2.